This is the Lamborghini Diablo SVR. And I would say this is the last of what I consider the ridiculous Lamborghini designs. Now, ridiculous doesn't necessarily always mean a negative thing. I'm just saying, you know, the Kunta and this car were by far some of the most outlandish designs that Lamborghini did before they became a much more serious performer. And they did once they took this particular factory car, in other words, the stock car and converted it to this racer. The overall shape on this model is perfect. There's no question about that. Um, this is kind of, or I should say, is actually a newer version of a previously produced auto art model. The original one was in die cast metal. This one is in their ABS uh, material, i.e. plastic. And the paint on it is really good. It's evenly laid out. There is some orange peel, but it's nothing that would detract from the beauty of this paint. It is really nice. The wheel detail is outstanding. It mimics the real thing to perfection. And these wheels do look very, very accurate. You have this nice gloss black OZ rim with the contrasting red script on it. There is a valve stem and there is scripting on the tires. Behind this beautiful rim, you do have this very well detailed uh, brake caliper as well as the steel rotor and it definitely looks the part. It looks fantastic. It goes for the front and the back. As you've noticed probably already the back wheel or entire combination is larger than the front which is accurate and very very nice. So moving on to the front of the model you have these front air ducts which obviously on the production or standard model would actually have headlights they're replaced with this air ducting this car has a v12 engine in it and it required a lot of air um, the engine was was a very hot engine and so there's a lot of ducting throughout this car to cool this engine as well as the brake rotors as well, because again, they were still brake rotors. But the front end is very nicely done. And when, once you get to a closer look, you'll see some of these perforated grills, but there is one below here, which is really nice. The light detail looks really good. Moving on to the back of the model. The tail lights very accurate. The colors are correct to the real thing. You have this very nice perforated grill here as well. And again, there will be a closer view of that for you. These are perforated grills too. You have this very, very nice hollow exhaust and they do look fantastic. They have a metallic look to them and they have depth to them. So they definitely look very realistic. No complaints there at all. This is a fully opening model. So let's take this outer rock tool. These are the scissor doors. And these are fairly simple to open up. Just push and it comes right up. It, this model does come with the standard outer rock tool, so we'll use that to open the front compartment. As well as the back. And there you are, fully opened model. Let's take a closer look to the interior. Taking a closer look at this very, very well detailed interior, 
you do have the steering wheel and it does have the flocking on it which is very accurate you have flocking throughout this interior you can see it there on the armrest there this is a fully stitched seat belt and it does have a photo etched buckle as well you have your Lamborghini bull there so your Diablo which stands for devil from what I remember Look at the gate on the shifter. Look how realistic that looks. How many models have you seen where a shifter is so out of scale? It just looks like a big stick in the middle of the car. Not the case with this one. That one looks very, very good. You will see that the dashboard is very well displayed out. The white face gauges not only are the numbers present but if you look closely you can actually see the odometer as well it's just a testament of how much better the technologies come when it when it comes to model making Again, you have this full flocking throughout the dashboard which is really nicely done you have the switch box there for all the different things like the cooling fans, the ignition of the car. Just looking on the other side, you have that canister there and it's fully plumbed. Again, a better look at that beautiful shifter along again with that switch box. Here you see these beautiful OZ wheels, as I mentioned before. That center bolt looks so realistic. It's amazing. The scripting on this Brembo here, and I'm, at first I thought, okay, that looks kind of goofy. It's not what I'm used to seeing in Brembo. That print on that caliper is exactly the way it should be. So that is accurate. These are slotted rotors, as you can see as well. It's just very, very nice. The front compartment is pretty standard. Nothing surprising there. Nothing unusual. Everything is all black. I'm not sure if that's exactly accurate, but again, it's just a storage compartment. Didn't expect too much from there. The hinge work is fantastic. I don't have any concerns about this ever becoming frail or weak or failing on me and there is a way to adjust the screw should it start to get loose you just tighten the screws down and it'll be just as good as new right here these are actual vents so there is a perforated grill there you can see these little details that just astound me with this model if you look closer to the front there's that perforated grill I was referring to in the front and if you look at the lights in the front, not only do you have this very nicely detailed lens, but you can clearly see the bulbs for the lights. Moving to the back of the car, here's this beautiful V12 engine. If I was to compare this to anything, I would compare it to the Bugatti race car that I reviewed earlier this year. I would say the Bugatti engine is a little more polished, but this is very good as well. These, these ducting here you see here, these look like they're soft. They're not, but again, Auto Art has did such a great job making it look as if these were soft, but they're not. These black ones go out and pull air in and draw it into the intake, which is really nice. And then you have this additional cooling here as well, which takes from the top of the car. And there is a venting that is used to pull from the top of the car to pull that air in. That's what you see right here. Not only is this motor really detailed, it has a lot of depth to it. This is one of those engines that you could look at today and think you've captured all the details and then look again tomorrow and see something new. 
it's detailed all the way down to the floor. It's just really, really nice. Moving on to the back of this, it's this beautiful perforated grill. Nice floating Diablo there with the SVR. This here, if you didn't know already, I know a lot of you do, but some of you don't. This is the outlet or input for the air hose. You put this in and it lifts the car up. So this is compressed air that you would put through here. And you see these here? These would actually push a stem out that lifts the car up. So that's how it's serviced. If you watched any racing, then you're familiar with what I'm referring to. But that's what those are. Those are called air jacks and that's exactly the way they work. It wouldn't have been a nice feature if you could move those and they would actually come out and you could actually lift the car up. Yeah, that'd be a very nice feature. It's not the case. Exoto actually has a model that does that. This beautiful exhaust outlet. And I really love the fact that, again, that these are nice and deep. So it doesn't look like it's just a big piece of plastic. And it does go all the way through. So that is very, very nice. I also mentioned these vents here. The thing that surprised me the most about these vents, and I'm breaking my rule of picking up models, but it's fine. If you look closely, there's a fan behind that vent. You see that? And these are these little small details that surprise you when you examine these models. And that's a really nice one. They didn't have to do that, but they did. Last thing, I closed the top just to show this nicely perforated grill here. As I mentioned before, this engine obviously required a lot of cooling. And so that's why you have all these perforated grills and ducts throughout this entire car. And that includes the two on the roof to again scoot more air to draw it right into the motor. And there you are. This is the Lamborghini SVR Diablo by AutoArt. And now to my conclusions. The Lamborghini Diablo was created under the Chrysler Company banner. Yes, at one point, if you didn't know, Lamborghini was owned by an American company. And again, that would be Chrysler. Chrysler is now currently what you'd call Stellantis. Lamborghini was eventually purchased by Volkswagen and it still is under that Volkswagen banner as of today. Now, I also mentioned that the Diablo is the last of what I would consider the most outlandish stylings when it comes to Lamborghini. I do think their model or cars, I should say, are a lot more conservative compared to the cars of the 80s and the late 2000s. But this model is beautiful. It has a lot of detail, it has tons of detail, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that the earlier version of this car specifically the GTR um, Lamborghini Diablo had tons of detail and this one is just improved under that SVR version. You have perforated grills everywhere. You have venting everywhere. You have detail not only on the top of that engine but you flip the car underneath and there's tons of detail there as well. If I was to put a rating on this because I know some of you are into values I would give this three and a half dollar sign. This model definitely will increase in value once it disappears off the retail shelves. Please like and subscribe. That is the best way I'm going to know you're enjoying these videos. My next video is, yes, I actually am taking the bullet for you guys. I'm going to review that Pagani in the next video. I appreciate your time and I'll see you next time.